hello friends today we will discuss one of the important topic that is hypothesis its concept and types you see this topic is a, a part of educational research okay so before discussing this topic uh, let us first focus on certain discussion points and questions and uh, during the discussion we will try to get the answer of uh, uh, the questions and the discussion point the first discussion point is why there is the need of stating hypothesis in research and the second point is what is hypothesis third question is what are the sources of stating hypothesis then the fourth is what are the types of hypothesis and the last question that uh, comes to the mind that is how to state the hypothesis so during uh, this uh, today's discussion we will find out that uh, uh, what are the answer of these questions let us proceed to the first question that is why there is the need of stating hypothesis in research you see research is a very systematic and scientific process for conducting any research may be research in education may be research in social science may be research in any discipline of science we adopt a scientific process a scientific method at the same time we do it in a very systematic way so that's why uh, when we state hypothesis it directs the study in a systematic way okay we proceed in a systematic way it also helps in data organization and analysis hypothesis determines uh, the use of specific tools and techniques to collect data as well as use of statistical techniques for analyzing that data hypothesis helps uh, to research at the findings of the study in a systematic way it restricts to go against the earlier developed theories and principles so you see when you state a hypothesis definitely you have certain ideas on the research problem means what are the findings that have already uh, established in the earlier research and basing upon the earlier research and basing upon researchers experience and uh, other sources one can state the hypothesis so next we will discuss that uh, what is hypothesis you see the term hypothesis Uh, have been derived etymologically it has derived from two terms or two words that is hypo and thesis hypo means less than and thesis means truth so we can say the meaning of the concept of hypothesis is less than truth means though it is not the real solution of the problem but it is the tentative solution of the problem it is a supposition it is an assumption you can say means you are assuming the result of the study though that uh, uh, though your assumption means your assumption may or may not correct right when you will conduct the study and when you will test the uh, data test the result but assuming uh, a type of result tentatively uh, uh, you have to develop a supposition and basing upon that supposition that tentative guess you have to reach at the findings of the study next we will discuss that what are the different sources that is used for stating the hypothesis first of all i would like to say that the experience of the researcher this is one of the very important source because you see when a researcher conduct a study he or she involves in the study uh, you can say minutely means he, uh, he is acquainted with the every aspect every point and uh, uh, you can say every bit of the research every, uh, research uh, the study so that's why researcher uh, researcher's experience is a very you can say it's a very important aspect for stating the hypothesis important source for stating the hypothesis then we can say the background knowledge of the study you see when the researcher conduct a study uh, 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 in the chapter 1 he establishes a type of theoretical construct of the study okay so when developing a theoretical construct of the study studying the theories and principles of the variables that has been taken in the study so definitely a background knowledge researcher acquires 
from the study so that background knowledge that theoretical construct that principles that concept of the problem is also uh, work as one of the source for stating the hypothesis then again we can say Uh, the scientific theories and uh, understanding on theories that has been used in the study let in a study uh, the th- uh, the variables like uh, uh, let academic achievement intelligence self concept okay let such type of variables uh, are used so the researcher uh, what he does he studied the theoretical construct of the academic achievement how academic achievement is correlated with a uh, self concept how it is correlated with the uh, study habits uh, of the students so this theoretical construct is also work as one of the source for stating the hypothesis then second the analogies and the arguments you see i have already uh, said that uh, research is a scientific uh, work okay it follows a scientific approach so that's why the inductive reasoning the deductive reasoning and the arguments of the researcher is also uh, work uh, as a source of stating the hypothesis then we can say the literature studies you see uh, there is one chapter of uh, every research that is the review of related literature so when you will analyze the reviews when you will analyze the studies that has been conducted earlier there also you will get sufficient clue you will get sufficient information okay means how the variables are related with each other where there is a difference and where there is not a difference so such type of idea you will get by analyzing the review so that's why review of related literature is also one of the source for stating the hypothesis next we can say the expert opinion uh i had started discussion saying that experience of the researcher is one of the source for stating hypothesis but at the same time experts opinion means in the course of uh, our study uh, the researcher you know uh, uh, they come contact with experts in the field means those are, uh, who are doing such type of good work uh, uh, in that related topic in that related problem so their experience and their opinion is also sometime become a source for stating the hypothesis next we'll come to the point that what are the different types of hypothesis you see broadly four types of hypothesis uh, are stated uh, in conducting the educational uh, research and research in uh, other disciplines in so, uh, social sciences that is a directional hypothesis non directional hypothesis research hypothesis and a null hypothesis now let us try to discuss that uh, Uh, uh how to state hypothesis in different types uh, let us first take the example of directional hypothesis i can give two example let the first example is there is positive relationship between academic achievement and study habits of the students and the second example is students with high test anxiety will score badly in examination as compared to the students of low test anxiety so here you see in the first example i stated that a positive relationship between uh, positive relationship exist between academic achievement and study habits of the students means your direction is clear that in between the two variables okay academic achievement and study habits the relationships are positive means changes in one variable occurs changes in other variable both are proceeding in a positive direction at the same time in the second uh, hypothesis i have stated that uh, students with high test anxiety will score badly in comparison to the students uh, with low test anxiety means those have highly uh, those have high test anxiety in their examination they will score less in comparison uh, to the students uh, those have low test anxiety in their examination means here also direction is it clear means high anxiety students will score less in comparison to the low anxiety students let us uh, uh, discuss the second types of hypothesis that is the non directional hypothesis here also i will take two example let the first example is there is a difference in the academic achievement of bed students enrolled in open and conventional universities so here you see there is a difference of academic achievement of bed students enrolled in open and conventional universities so the students those have uh, pursued their degree in open university and the students those have pursued their degree in a conven- in a, a conventional university 
there is a difference in their academic achievement but here the difference is not specified the direction of the difference is not given means who did well and who perform uh, you know comparatively less is not clear here so that's why this is a non directional hypothesis because direction is not given and the second there is a difference in the academic achievement of the students in high anxiety and low anxiety in the examination here it has said that there is a difference of high anxiety and low anxiety students in their achievement but here also direction is not given means who did well and who not that is also not clearly mentioned so that's why these two examples are come under non directional hypothesis next let us come to discuss the research hypothesis let me to give one example there is a difference between the learning style of boys and girls so here it is said that there is a difference of the learning style among the boys and girls but here the learning style is not uh, 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 you can say specified means that difference whether boys are doing well or the girls are doing well that is also clearly not specified but you see research uh, hypothesis it uh, clarifies a concept but when there is a research hypothesis for testing the research hypothesis we have to state a null hypothesis so let us try to discuss what is a null hypothesis you see null hypothesis is also called as a statistical hypothesis as statistics is used in null hypothesis for testing that hypothesis it indicates that there is either no difference or no correlation between two variables okay so uh, the researcher is keeping himself or herself in a very neutral position without any bias Uh, uh the researcher is stating the hypothesis that there is no dip, no significant difference or no correlation but uh, when you will test it then we have to justify whether uh, there is difference exist or whether the, uh, uh, there is correlation any correlation ship exist means we can accept the null hypothesis or we can reject the null hypothesis let us take uh, two example Uh, i would like to say that the first example is there is no significant difference exist between the mean scores of boys and girls in their uh, achievement in mathematics and the second example is there is no relationship between achievement and self concept of the students in secondary school examination you see in both the examples in first examples it has stated that no significant difference exist between mean scores of boys and girls and in the second example this has stated that there is no relationship between achievement and self concept of the students in secondary school examination so here you see means the researcher is keeping himself or herself in a very neutral position without any biasness uh, 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 the researcher is saying that there is no significant difference or there is no correlation but but when you will study it when you will verify it when you will test it will justify that uh, 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 whether the hypo the null hypothesis is accepted or the null hypothesis is rejected so friends today we discuss about the concept of hypothesis and uh, uh, the sources of hypothesis different types of hypothesis as well as how the hypothesis is stated thank you